Welcome to Worship at Zion today. Uh, a few announcements I'd like to make. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, a very sad announcement on uh, Friday afternoon. A uh, tragic accident took the life of Brian Oman. Um, please remember Brian's uh, wife Jennifer and their uh, three young boys in your prayers. Uh, also the, the entire Oman family and the Sell family. Um, funeral service for Brian will be he held here at Zion on Wednesday at 11 o'clock and the visitation uh, for Brian Oman will also be held here at uh, Zion on Tuesday in the Fellowship Hall, Tuesday from 4 to 8 and also one hour before the service on Wednesday. So please, uh, I know that they, they appreciate your love and your support at this time. As we uh, come through this service today, at the very end of our service, we will be staying in here. It is uh, the day of our church's annual meeting. And uh, this I have come to see as a very good thing in the life of the church, when we can come together and to look at the year that has gone by and to look at the year that is coming up to, uh, to focus on who we are as a church and how we do the things that we need to do. So the uh, annual meeting will be held here immediately after the worship service. We'll take a break, five minutes, ten maybe, uh, tops, just to get things set up, uh, microphones and everything. So uh, a fellowship time in the fellowship hall will be held after the annual meeting. So I hope that you will be able to stay for that good time that we have together. We continue our worship now as we sing hymn number 520. The hymn is Dearest Jesus at Your Word. <clears throat> Our service of confession and forgiveness of sins is found in the front portion of the hymnal on page 94. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, 
whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And our prayer for the day is printed in the worship folder. <clears throat> Please join me as we pray. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we sing this morning, I wanted to, to express our appreciation to Rob and Amy Mondlock for being with us this morning. Rob is director and Amy joining our alto section, and also to Judy for accompanying us again this morning. The piece we're going to be doing this morning, Pachem, is in Latin, so we felt we should share with you what the words actually mean before we, we sing. The first phrase, Donna Nobis Pachem, means give us peace. Then the second phrase, et in terra pax omnibus bane voluntatis, means an on earth peace to all of goodwill.
Before Elaine reads, uh, I just want to say thanks to the women for singing this morning. We very much appreciate that. And to uh, just give my welcome to uh, Rob Monlock and his wife Amy for being here. I've known them for many years. And uh, in Menominee, they were both teachers, uh, Rob at Elk Mound and Amy in Menominee. You can be seated, that's fine. <laughs> and, uh, and appreciate the musical uh, abilities that you bring and the gifts that you are willing to share. Uh, yes, the Lord is good to us, some of us, not all of us. <laughs> uh, and uh, Amy, uh, just a sidelight, is a graduate of one of our uh, church schools, Concordia uh, College in Moorhead. And uh, I was thinking Carol, uh, just a, one over, is a graduate of St. Olaf College, so there's a little friendly rivalry on music uh, between those two schools. But what a wonderful gift to, to share. Thank you for being here. In today's reading, the Apostle and Pastor Paul used the, met the metaphor of the human body <coughs> to describe how intimately connected we are in the church. For this struggling congregation in Corinth, Paul delivers a vital message of unity that is a mark of the church today. Just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Now, if the, if, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, there would be the sense of hear where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? In the fact, in, in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would one body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division of the body, in the body, but that's its part should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. And now you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of all the different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. That sends a word. Okay, I'm going to invite any uh, young people who are here, if you would come on up this morning, and I don't know if we have a whole lot of people here, but up through 6th or 7th graders, okay, if you could come on down, you want to come down? Sure, would be okay? And if you want to come up and just kind of help fill it out a little bit, would that be okay? Is it Acolyte? Come on. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, okay. Um, no, that's okay. I guess we can go up there. The big kid is my daughter, Paula. 
and uh, she's our oldest daughter, and uh, she got Joan and I year off to a wonderful start um, in our life. We are celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary this summer, and she said, we're going to start the year off in a fun way, and so she provided the opportunity for us to go to Costa Rica on the uh, 30th of uh, December through the 8th of uh, January uh, to visit the family uh, who we have uh, connections with through Paula in Costa Rica. So Joan and I suffered through 80 to 90 degree weather uh, <laughs> down there. It was hot, but it was fun. So we had and that. And today is his birthday. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Andy, happy birthday to you. Well, thank you. Rob, I'm glad you are all singing and not me, because <laughs> that's one of the gifts I don't have. But. Uh, 73 years ago, uh, my uh, dad, uh, mother Carola and my dad Paul had me in Superior, Wisconsin. And uh, I've been blessed uh, with a lot of things since that time, and we appreciate that. So thank you, Paul, to do that. Um, today, uh, as all days, we come together and we worship and think together as the people of God. Um, do you know what this is? What is that? The Bible. Okay. Do you know what this is? It's a scroll. That's right. So that's a good thing. This is the Bible that we read from on Sunday morning when we gather for worship and hear God's word. This is the scripture that Jesus used when he worshipped, when he was your age, in Nazareth in Galilee. Okay? It's a different way of having uh, things that are here. It unrolls like this. Okay? And it's a scroll, as you say. And if we unroll that a little bit, and we have to kind of keep it, I'm not quite as good on scrolls as I am maybe in the Bible, but as you unroll that, we see that there is some scripture that's coming up there. Now, the way that the scroll was written, the Hebrew in which it was originally written for the Hebrew people, started from right to left. We go from left to right, right? But I'm unrolling it from the right side here to the left side, and um, I'm going to ask maybe if one of you would be a volunteer to read what I've unrolled here. Would one of you like to do that? Okay, you do that. Just hold that. And uh, you can read uh, as you can. Or you can stand up if you want to do that. Maybe that would be helpful. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the wild animals of earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. God saw everything that he, made, that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. And there was <clears throat> even, and there was morning the sixth day. Thank you. OK. So what you read was Genesis, the first chapter of Genesis, where the story of creation is in the Bible. And so I'm going to roll that up and remember that that's at the beginning of Scripture, where human beings were created out of God's love and care for us. So then we're going to go here, and we're going to go, oh, a blank page. Okay. And another blank page. We're going down history here a little bit. And then we're coming to another section, which is from Luke chapter 10. 
and this is another section of scripture but not one that Jesus had when he was there but one that picked up the story from the Old Testament to when Jesus was living okay and this is a story from the life of Jesus would you like to read would that be okay or not as a, as a young lady to help with that can you do that Okay, just a moment, I'll put this up here. here. Just then a man stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to the man, what is written in the law? What do you read there? The man answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with your, all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and with all and with your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. Thank you very much. So we have the scripture, which is at the heart of what we do as we gather together in worship. The Old Testament to remember God's gifts and history with the people of the Old Testament and as we scroll down to begin then the New Testament, which is a description of the life and the teachings of Jesus. And as we are all creatures of God, that we are given love and our creation, as it talks in the first and second chapters of Genesis, we belong to God as his creatures and we appreciate that. Jesus talked to the young man about how it is that we share what we are and who we are and Jesus said the first commandment is to love God with your heart mind and soul that that is our first command and Jesus said the second is like that to love your neighbor as yourself so those two things are really important that we belong to God and that in our life we love and serve God in our community and neighborhood so thank you for being at worship this morning. Be strengthened and encouraged as you go about your daily tasks to love your neighbor as God has loved you. Thank you for being here this morning and sharing in the scroll. The hymn is number 509, I believe. Uh, God's word is our great heritage. I believe Jesus would have put on a prayer shawl as he was handed a scroll to read as he came to the synagogue in Nazareth. My stole, like a prayer shawl, connecting uh, with our focus on what we read. Reading from the gospel this morning, Luke chapter 4. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, 
He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to Jesus. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. <clears throat> then Jesus rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on Jesus. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being here. I just love our Lutheran tradition, which every three years or sooner brings us back to different texts that we read. Right now we're reading from the Gospel of Luke and interspersed with the Gospel of John as we come together in our worship experience. We sang in the opening hymn this morning, Dearest Jesus, at your word we have come again to hear you. It amazes me as a pastor for over 40 years and preaching a good share of the Sundays and special occasions during that time that the word is still new and exciting and interesting. It may be the same word, but the context is always different. In other words, what's going on around is always new. Sometimes it's great and joy-filled, and sometimes it's difficult and sad. But the word is there in the midst of the context of our life. And I learn something almost every time I open a new scripture passage and I think about that for preaching. And today what struck me was that Jesus worshipped together with his community of people in the synagogue in Nazareth. Was, was his habit on worship. Now that was on a Saturday, a Friday evening, excuse me. Uh, in the old days, the Sabbath began Friday evening and went to Saturday evening. Might have been on Saturday morning, what we now call. The Christian community changed to Sunday because of the resurrection of Christ. But he read from the scroll there. And then, do you remember what it said? He sat down and began to teach them. I thought, hmm, that's kind of interesting. I don't know why I have never focused on that in my ministry, but I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> because it's helpful, I think, in kind of understanding, maybe, from out of the Old Testament tradition, that the teacher, in Jesus' words, is not greater than the student. And the teacher is the servant of all. And so the teacher sits down on the level, if you will, of the people who are being taught. It seems to me that's at the heart of the word in the New Testament that God chose to become a human being and to enter into our experience at our level 
to bring God's love and forgiveness and hope into our lives. So here we are. Not that the pulpit's not a good place too. <laughs> but let's think about God's word today. And I want you to look, if you will, uh, on the front of your bulletin, a nice picture of Zion Church. The church is not the building, the church is the people. And together today, we are considering going into the future with our annual meeting, looking back into 2015 and ahead into 2016. Our mission statement is under the picture of the church. And I think as we gather and hear the word and as we are sharing today, can we keep that mission statement in our mind as we hear the word of God to serve our Lord, to care for all, and spread his word. Significant, I think. In about 1955, <laughs> long ago, when I was much younger, we lived in Des Moines, Iowa. My brother, who had been deaf and aphasic from birth, uh, needed to go into a special school for the deaf in St. Louis, Missouri. And so he left to go down to live in St. Louis, Missouri and was there for two years in the school for the deaf in St. Louis. The third year, my mother said, oh, it's pretty hard for Peter to live alone. So she went down as a nurse that she was to become the nurse at the school. And she spent that year in St. Louis with him. The fourth year, my dad said, I don't like to be away from my wife and uh, Peter for that long. So we all moved down to St. Louis and uh, my dad went to, my mother continued as a nurse at the school. My dad went to school in social work. He was a pastor and uh, I started my high school career in St. Louis, Missouri. The third year when my mom and my brother were in St. Louis, and my dad and I were in Des Moines, Iowa. He was the director of Lutheran Welfare or Social Service of Iowa. And on many Sundays, as a young boy of about 12 or so, I got to accompany him out into the hinterland of Iowa. Okay, we know Iowa's in the hinterland right now uh, with the political things there, but I wasn't uh, thinking much about that at that time. Uh, he would take me to congregations and he would talk about the mission of Lutheran Welfare of Iowa. And he often used this text that we've read this morning. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring good news to the captives, to proclaim uh, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty the oppressed and proclaim the year of the Lord. Now, I don't know why I remember this because it's a long time ago, but I suppose I heard it four or five or ten times during that year. My dad said, we must not take this text as Jesus gave it to us and spiritualize that text. In other words, say, oh, it's the poor in spirit or the oppressed in mind. He said, Lutheran social service on your behalf is engaged in very real ministry to people who are oppressed and captive in their lives. One of the joys was adoption in those days. And many people in the congregation were able to adopt children through Lutheran welfare. But they also were involved in the community of helping people in various kinds of ways. And my dad said, the gospel that Jesus brings to us is a gospel which changes lives in our communities and in our world. And he always invited the people to be involved, of course, in the financial support of Lutheran welfare, but also in their place as a congregation 
Lutheran in that particular place, but in their congregation to be involved in bringing the reality of the gospel into the lives of people. When Jesus finished reading and talked about the text that he had read from Isaiah, and he put the scroll away, he sat down and he began to teach and he said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. God's incarnation in the person of Jesus is noted in the gospel. It wasn't an easy transformation to understand. And sometimes it was difficult for people to make the application of how do we, as we said with the young people, love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. Sometimes there was some strident opposition to Jesus' involvement with people who were different, with people who weren't probably at the synagogue every Saturday or Friday evening. And yet Jesus came to say, the good news is for all who are in need. The good news is God's love for all and God's forgiveness for all and the good news is that you as the people of God bring hope into some hopeless situations into some difficult times I would pray for us this morning as we gather here in worship, called together by the word. And as we will finish our worship service shortly and adjourn to our annual meeting, that we will keep this word in our minds and in our hearts. And I think in some ways, it makes the gospel less complicated. Certainly, we may look forward to the joy of the second coming of Christ. We may look forward with hope to being with God forever. And that's the good news. But that's kind of ethereal. And that's kind of out there. But Jesus invites us into the daily experience. And I don't know where that will be for you today or tomorrow or for me, but there will be opportunities at school, at work, at home, in our community where you may help to set people free. When Jesus read from the scroll of Isaiah, the 66th chapter it was about the people of God who had been in Babylon as, cap as captives in the exile for almost a hundred years and Cyrus of Persia came to Babylon conquered Babylon and set them free to return to their homeland after they had been there for a hundred or more years they were immigrants who knew and took with them the scripture that they had learned and written in Babylon and brought it back and this was one of the scriptures which they shared and read together how many times do we have the opportunity in our mission statement to serve the Lord, 
to care for others and to share God's Word in real and helpful and meaningful ways in our daily experience. Thank you for the vision that you have as a member of this congregation. Thank you for the vision that you have in sharing this word in your daily life experience. I don't know if Jesus would have said that in his day, probably not, but I attended an event on Monday of this week and the black preacher said, let us together say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. We confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We ask our ushers to wait upon us as we share our offerings.
truth we turn to you make us your own your holy people light for the world to see Christ be our light shine in our hearts shine through the darkness Christ be our light shine in your church gathered today longing for peace our world is troubled longing for hope many despair your word alone has power to save us make us your living voice Christ be our light shine in our shine through the darkness Christ be our light shine in your church gathered today longing for food many are hungry longing for water many still thirst make us your bread broken for others shared until all are fed Christ be our light shine in our hearts shine through the darkness Christ be our light shine in your church gather today longing for shelter are homeless longing for warmth many are cold make us your building sheltering others walls made of living stone Christ be our light shine in our hearts shine through the darkness Christ be our light shine in your church gathered today many the gifts many the people many the hearts that yearn to belong let us be servants to one another signs of your kingdom come Christ be our light shine in our hearts shine through the darkness Christ be our light shine in your world gather today Christ be our light as we live in this world that is looking for light in so many dark places may we be your truth Make us your own, your holy people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, be our light. As people are longing for peace, looking for hope, some are living in despair. We ask your grace to be shown through us, through your church around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, be our light. As we seek to feed the hungry in our own community and around the world. Help us also to share the word, to be that living bread for people in our communities, that we might all be fed by the word of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Christ, be our light. We reach out to people who are struggling in this life, to people who are homeless, May we always keep our doors open to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, be our light. You have given us many, many gifts, the gifts of your Spirit, that they may be used as we gather together, as we share those gifts. Your word is spread and your will is done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This day, of course, we reach out in our prayers to the family of Brian Oman, and we ask that you would 
give them comfort and strength and faith in these uh, days and years to come, that his presence will be missed, but his uh, memory will not be forgotten. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We take a moment for our own silent prayers at this time. And we offer the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all the lands and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edges of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is pure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Would you please stand as we receive the blessing? <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn. Number 551, the Spirit sends us forth to serve.
share a dream and help the blind to see. We go to be the hands of Christ to scatter joy like seed and all the benediction for today would be to stay in peace and serve the Lord. Uh, and uh, if you do need to uh, step out for a while, you want to move around, it'll be five, ten minutes and we will be ready.